Hello, hello. I did some shopping. Being a musician can be weird. You work with your equipment to make money just to buy more and better equipment. I love it. Today I would love to walk you through my new studio setup. And since I'm doing a lot of studio work out of my own studio here, I can somehow justify spending huge amounts of money for audio gear. I'm recording all of my YouTube stuff here, but mainly I do a lot of sessions as a hired gun for artists and producers all around the world here in this studio. And of course, I'm doing all my DrumX lessons here. Uh, DrumX is my online drum school um, where we provide you with a hopefully perfectly fitting practice schedule for drums in just a few clicks. And all of these schedules and all of the lessons, they come with a video um, and all of them are recorded here. So check out www.dramex.com and let's get back to the video. Back in 2020, I bought my very first Universal Audio X8P interface, which was one of the best investments I've ever made. The sound I was able to generate here was at least three times better. Here's a quick demonstration. I've recorded a drum cover of the song Overdrive by Conan Gray using my old setup, the Moto 8 Pre as my main interface and a um, Behringer Ultra Gain ADA 8200 as additional 8 channels via ADAT. Sounds like this. One week later, I did a cover of Cutthroat by Imagine Dragons using my new Universal Audio interface with the Motu 8 Pre as additional 8 channels via ADAT. Sounds like this. Big difference, right? And now I bought myself another Universal Audio X8 interface. So now I'm using a Universal Audio X8P, a Universal Audio X8 as the two main interfaces, uh, the Motu 8 Pre for eight channels via ADAT and the Behringer Ultra Gain 8200 for another eight channels via ADAT. Obviously, it's a very, very bad idea to use 32 channels to mix drums because you get a lot of face issues using that many microphones. But since I'm working with a lot of different producers, a lot of different mixing engineers, most of them I've never even met. For me, it's a very good thing to have that many options because I don't know what they prefer. Do they prefer a closed room? Do they prefer a mono room or do they prefer a hall room? I don't know. That's why I would rather record too many options than not the right ones at all. I'm always using Dropbox for sending my stems to the producers or mixing engineers. And in the Dropbox, I have a folder with the microphones I personally would use to mix the drums for the song. And then I have another folder named additional mics. And in that folder, the person I sent the files to can find all the other microphones. I personally wouldn't hear in the song, but maybe they like it. Okay, enough talking. I'm going behind the kit now and record something and then we can go through each microphone I'm using and listen to how it sounds. See you. Okay, we have the kick out. Then we have a sub kick mic. Here's the fat kick mic. And here's the boundary mic inside the kick. And another dynamic mic in the kick. Then we have snare top. Snare bottom in stereo. Now both the toms. Now the most important mics, the overheads.
And now an overhead mono. And a hi-hat microphone. The right microphone. Rooms, the main rooms inside. Now the room mics outside the studio. And a front of kit mic. I'm also recording a dirt microphone, which also already has some processing done before recording. Okay, and then I also use a played reverb. Uh, the front of kit mic is sent into an aux channel inside the UAD console, and then I put a played plugin on it and directly record it just to save some time when exporting files. Here's how it sounds. And then I'm also recording the Wurst. Amazing, that's all the channels, completely raw. Let's listen to a mix.